So the majority of patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia are asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms from their disease whatsoever. Usually it's picked up incidentally, in other words, that they're in their internist office or their family doctor's office and they have routine blood work and the do doctor notices that their white count is a little elevated, specifically their lymphocyte count, and they may say, hmm, something's going on or maybe the patient has a cold or a virus. Let me bring them down back. I'll repeat their blood test and see if it's still elevated. And if it's still elevated, they'll send them to the hematologist. So that's the majority of how most patients are diagnosed. The two other common ways people get diagnosed is they might notice that they feel a lymph node and they went, how long has that been there? And they go and they see a physician, they get it biopsied. So that happens in a minority of patients. For women who have mammograms, they might notice a lymph node on the mammogram and they do a biopsy of that to make sure that, you know, they're not sure if there's breast cancer or some other disorder. And so they, they, they pick it up on the mammogram. So those are less common. It's mostly just diagnosed on routine blood work. When they come to my office, you know, first is first. If their blood work, if their white count is elevated, but their other blood counts are normal, we send a slew of blood tests. So people really, I sit and talk. I think the, the first consultation is really sitting and explaining what the disease is to them and also to talk about some of the blood testing that we're going to do. First, you have to diagnose the patient, which is very easy because because this is a blood disorder, it's in your blood, so it's readily accessible. Uh, and so you can send off blood tests that will diagnose. It's a, a test called the flow cytometry test. So it, it looks at uh, the lymphocytes and tells us if these are normal, abnormal, and do they mark as CLL cells as opposed to uh, another, there are other lymphomas that sometimes rarely present in the blood as well. So it'll give us the diagnosis. And then we talk about how this may impact their life. So if a patient has an elevated white count, but their other counts are normal, and I literally go through all their other blood counts. So we talk about the red cells, when those, uh, I always liken them to having gas in your car. Those are the ones that help give you energy. If you're anemic, so this is a term that many people hear, and there are many reasons why somebody can be anemic. So if you lose blood for whatever reason that may be, you have a bad ulcer, um, or you're bleeding out of your rectum, that's a loss of blood. When we're talking about leukemia or CLL specifically, you're talking about a crowding out of the bone marrow. So a reduction of those good cells based on the marrow, not from a loss of blood. So when you're anemic, you're running low on those red cells and so you feel it. If you're climbing a flight of stairs or you're doing some exercise, you're working harder. Your heart's working harder because, you, because the red cells are low. And so you're huffing and puffing a little bit more, okay? If the platelets are low, those are part of the blood elements that help with clotting. So if you cut yourself or you go through elective surgery um, or you're having a procedure done, if the platelets are low, you're more prone to bleeding or, or e bruising easily. Um, so that would be a reason to treat somebody if their platelets were low. And then the neutrophils are a part of the white blood cell count that help fight infection. So if any of these good counts are low, that may be a reason to treat somebody with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. If their blood counts are normal, but they just have an elevated lymphocyte count, so their white count's elevated, they don't need treatment. So they can be monitored, okay? Um, for patients, the, the other flavor of CLL is that the lymphocytes are in your lymph nodes. We all have lymph nodes that are part of your immune system. Think of the disease. I always like to think of CLL as a disorder or a dysregulation of your immune system. And so the lymph nodes that we all help when they fight infection, if you get a sore throat, your glands get swollen, the lymphocytes can aggregate in the lymph nodes, and so your lymph nodes can be bulky. And not everybody with CLL has bulky lymph nodes, but there are a fair amount who do. And so if they grow and they become very bulky, that would be another indication to treat somebody. People ask about imaging, so CAT scans come up quite a bit. Um, people who, uh, if, if they, I, physical exams are usually more than, you know, that, that's usually all that is needed initially. If I think that somebody has bulky lymph nodes on presentation, I might do a baseline CAT scan because I can't feel the nodes in the abdomen or pelvis. And so if somebody has very bulky disease, I'd like to know how bulky their disease is in the abdomen or pelvis because that it may be that they may be close to having some issues from their disease and I want to know about that. Otherwise, I do not do routine CAT scans just to follow their lymph nodes. If they have a tiny little lymph node, but it doesn't bother them, we're not going to treat them. So just repeated, repeating CAT scans, radiation exposure, not necessary. Before start, starting somebody on therapy, that's a different issue. They'll get a baseline imaging so we know where things are before they start. But just routine CAT scans I don't do. Um, and then the other thing about, so the, other, the question I think that always comes up from patients because they're nervous about it is bone marrows. So you can do a bone marrow exam, it's leukemia. Uh, a bone marrow exam is when we actually put a needle into the bone marrow and we take a, we literally actually like when they draw your blood from your arm, you take a syringe that sucks out 
the blood, just looks like blood, from the marrow, So, because that, that's where you make these cells. And it, te it tells us how much leukemia is there. It also tells us what the good elements look like. The importance of doing a bone marrow before treatment is important, so I do do it before somebody initiates therapy. But if somebody comes in the office and their, other, their counts are normal, just that they have a high white count, they do not need a bone marrow evaluation.